You're stupider than you look. <laughs> Thanks. Beautifuls, this is Romy here, and welcome back to Dark Nights. We are here moving along to the next guy. We're gonna go for the odd guy in the forest, which I don't remember his name. Why did I think about him? I should keep an eye on him, that's why. Because his scars are crazy. I should keep an eye on him. The disappearance started with the tourist in the forest, after all. He asked me if I was a tourist, so he must know something about them. He also said the cave in the waterfall was dangerous. It can't be a mere coincidence. I'm thinking of paying him a visit. I'm sure I'll find some clues. I grab my jacket and head to the forest. Wait, at this time? Oh, I guess it's still daytime. It is not difficult to find my way. The field trip is still fresh in my memory. Last time I saw the crimson-haired man, he was in that cave. I might have a chance to meet him again if I head over there. I follow the path to the point where it splits in two. Leoji told me that one leads to the waterfall and the other goes farther in the forest. Oh, dude, I don't remember what path you took. I guess to the right? I think we took the right side. I go deeper into the forest. After a while, I realize I took the wrong path. Damn, I don't have a map with me. At this rate, I might end up lost if I continue. From the corner of my eye, I notice a shadow floating through the bushes. I thought of returning, but the trail is actually a loop that leads around the monument in the forest, as well as the waterfall. Speaking of luck, even though I took a detour, I searched the lake's edge, but there's no sign of crimson-haired man. Even the rocks that made a path towards the cave are gone. I can see the cave, but how do I get there now? The rocky face of the waterfall gives me an idea. The cave itself is not that far from the side of the lake. I can climb. I carefully balance my f I'm climbing up a mountain? Or whatever? I carefully balance my foot on a rock that then reach up to steady myself on a clink of it on a chink in the stone. A clink. I have always done well during PE. Now all that rope climbing will finally pay off. Climbing across is easy until I almost reach the cave. My arms start to strain and I almost lose my grip. They say for climbing rocks, you should use your legs more than the arms, which I have not been doing. I might have over overestimated myself. As I lean over to search for another handhold, the rock under my foot suddenly crumbles. Crumbles. Huh? My heart skips as my fingers lose their grip, my body lurching downward. Before I know it, I am falling into the lake. Cold water jabs into my skin like icy needles. I try to swim to the surface, but my numb arms and legs are no match for the current. It pushes me deeper into the lake. This is no good. I'm going to drown. Dude, I, I can't swim in real life, so I'm already dead. I can barely see a thing. My lungs burn from, for air as everything goes black. Welp. When my consciousness returns, there is a solid ground under me, rather than the sensation of floating. I slowly open my eyes. Judging from the rocky ceiling, I am in a cave. I set up abruptly, surprised by my surroundings. How did I get here? As I look around, my chest starts to ache. I start coughing. I remember falling into the lake and almost drowning. Someone must have saved and carried me here. The massive walls of this place are not like the dripping, dripping darkness of the cave behind the waterfall. And speaking of dripping, I notice that my clothes are totally soaked. Ugh, I'm a total mess. It's gonna it's gonna take a while to dry off. You're finally awake. I know that voice. It's the crimson haired guy from yesterday. As I turn my head to look, he places a hand on my shoulder. Are you okay? I stare at him in confusion but nod. Why are you so stubborn? I told you not to come back. You haven't explained. My sentence was cut off midway as I start coughing again. You're lucky I was nearby, otherwise you would be a corpse at the bottom of that lake right now. <sighs> well, Thank you. Take your clothes off. Excuse me? There's no way he's just told me to undress. I must have misheard it. The man unwraps a sash from around his waist and takes his... Hayori? Is that Hayori? Or Howry? Howry? Hayori? Off? He throws a ladder at me. Ladder. Oh, okay. The other thing. And when he speaks again, his voice is a dull monotone. Wear this in the meantime. Leave your clothes to dry and or you'll catch a cold. I'll be outside. He's stoic yet considerate. I don't know what to think of him, but for now, I'll just accept his apparent kindness. I mean, he's very muscular. I hold up his... I don't know what that word is. Hayori? Howry? I'm gonna say Hayori. It's probably wrong. 
My eyes fix on him as he walks away. Such a weird guy, but I think I can trust him. He did save me from drowning. I wait until he's out of sight before changing out of my clothes. When I slip into his warm hay area, I notice a scent of flowers. Though it smells pleasant, the clothing is too big for me and also feels breezy. When I step outside, I spot the crimson haired man sitting near a tree. Oh wow, so fast with the CGR compared to, um... What's his name? Kirito. <laughs> he seems to be napping peacefully, almost as though he has forgotten the trouble I caused when falling into the lake. He is very muscular and handsome. I hang my wet clothes on some tree branches to dry, then find a comfortable spot near this man to sit. I haven't thanked you for saving me. By the way, I should properly introduce myself. My name is Michiko. Oh no, his name... Is it... Call me... Zikun? Zikun, I'm assuming? If you must. We weren't supposed to meet for a second time. Why? Zikun opens his eyes and stares at me suspiciously. His deep purple eyes are beautiful and somehow... Intimidating. I've never seen anyone with such an eye color. It's very gorgeous. What did you come back here for? I was looking for something. You're stupider than you look. <laughs> Thanks. There's nothing to concern yourself with in this forest. Even if you lost something, there's no way you'd find it again. Hey, I'm not stupid and I wasn't done talking. Zikun closes his eyes, letting out a deep sigh. Well, stupid Michiko, you should talk less and concern yourself more with getting home. Wow, okay. I remain speechless. He makes so many assumptions about me and never lets me finish talking. What's wrong with this guy? I've never met anyone this rude. He doesn't even know me. I sigh. I'll get straight to the point. I have my doubts about those rumors, but the fact is, a whole group of tourists went missing in the tur- uh, in the tourists. Missing in the forest. Do you know anything about what happened? He looks real angry. Zikun's tone promptly turns sour. The demon does exist. For real? Yes, the forest is a dangerous place. Listen to the rumors and leave already. You can't tell me what to do. Besides, the forest is a public space. It is not a public place. Then, what are you doing here? What are you doing in a dangerous place like this? You're annoying me. Zinkun <laughs> takes a deep breath and stands up. Because he is a demon. Dun dun dun. I don't think this is going anywhere. Your clothes should be dry by now. Even with the sunny weather, my clothes can't be dry that fast. Zikun takes my clothes off the tree and tree branches and hands them over to me. Go home. Don't bother me anymore. But Zikun glares at me before turning away and walking off. I am so frustrated that I fail to realize I am still wearing his Hayori. Right? <laughs> Until he is already gone. Ugh, that forgetful guy. I'll have to return this to him later. Or never return it. I'll take it forever. <laughs> I absentmindedly gaze at the cloudy sky. The forecast said the weather would be really bad today. Seems like heavy rain is coming. And I forgot my umbrella. I'll need to hurry home to beat the rain. I don't want to get my socks wet again. Ugh, the worst feeling. Hey, Michiko. It's lunchtime. Are you daydreaming again? Yes. Share it with me. It's not worth mentioning. Boo. I wish I could remember my dreams as vividly as you do. I don't think you'd want to remember your nightmares. Hmm, even if they are scary, I'd still like to know. I laugh at Ikiya. Wait, let me grab my bento. This is the first time I'm actually seeing her eat lunch. Or talking about having lunch. By the way, did you know a massive storm is heading for our village? We haven't had one in ages. It can't be that bad. How will I get home without getting blown away? Don't worry, you should be fine. It is pe its peak is late at night. Just be sure not to go out then. Leoji, have you heard anything from your dad about the missing forest tourists? Hmm, they've since sent out some search parties, but no results so far. They've paused the investigation until the storm passes. This is random, but there is, is there any chance of people living in the forest? Living in such a place? No one is even allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. Are you still curious about that demon, Michiko? Or the demon? I was just wondering. If you ever consider exploring again, count me in. You two are so troublesome. We need someone to keep an eye on us. Why don't you come along, Ikea? I'm not a babysitter. Okay. After sitting through the rest of my boring classes, I quickly go home. I hope you will be notified if the school closes tomorrow if the storm continues on. As I walk, the sky steadily grows darker. There is no doubt that it will start pouring soon. I wanted to go to the forest today, but it seems like I'll have to give back Sikun's Hayori some other time. As soon as I reach my house, I feel the first raindrops fall on my, on my head. I reach for the door now, but something feels out of place. Goosebumps rise along my um, along the back of my neck, and I glance over my shoulder to double check my surroundings. 
Oh, hi, Chain. Nice to see you again. What are you doing outside my house, though? There's a single person standing in the distance. His scarf flutters out from behind him like a, a scythe. I would say scythe. <laughs> in the strong breeze. Everything about him gives me the chills. Is he looking in my direction? I immediately avert my gaze and enter the safety of my house. That was creepy. <laughs> Why was that guy standing there in the rain? Slowly and cautiously, I peek through the curtains to check on the suspicious person, but he's gone. I prepare a hot cup of tea to settle my nerves and try to relax in the living room. The rain outside is oddly soothing, even as it spatters with increasing insistence against the roof and windows. <sighs> Who's this? I don't... I never have guests over, so... Why is my doorbell ringing? Again. The sudden sound of my doorbell startles me. I was not expecting visitors. It can't be that creep. To make sure it's safe, I look through the people on the door. The mean forest guy? Zikun glares right through me as I open the door. His expression is dark as the black clouds. He is drenched from head to toe, wearing only a tank top and traditional pants. I guess he went through the heavy rain to get to my place. Wait! How does he know where I live? Zikun, wasn't it? What brings you here? Give me back my Hiyori. Right. What other reason would he have? How do you know where I live? I gesture for him to come inside so that he does not have to stand in the rain. So you can snort but steps past me into the living room. Walking behind him, I hide my smile. Wait here, I left it in my room. I leave Zikun in the living room and return just a moment later. Here it is. Thanks for letting me borrow it. Before you go though, how did you know where I live? I know this area. Talkative as always. Then Leoji asked me to report odd people like Zikun. No, I can't report him yet. I can't let him leave now either. I'll miss my chance to get something more substantial out of him. I need a reason to make him stay. Wait, I don't think it's a good idea to go back in that heavy rain. You can wait here until it calms down. An awkward silence falls between us as Zikun merely stares at me. I owe you for saving me. Zikun snorts but steps past me into the living room, hiding a smile and close the door to the storm outside. Another CGR? <laughs> Which one do I pick? I, I kind of like the first one. He is not self-conscious in the least as he brings his hair out, running his fingers through the long strands. I stare at, at his defined back. My thoughts get lost for a moment. At first sight, you would think he's only muscular, but his scars are more noticeable. I wonder what could have carved those into his arms. With all these peculiar men showing up around my house, I better be more careful. I can't take on someone like him by myself. Then again, he did save me from drowning. He can't really be the one responsible for the disappearing tourists, can he? As if hearing my thoughts, Zikun glances back at me. His gaze bore into mine. It becomes awkward for after a while. I should get a towel for him. Ay, oh, that looks so cute on him. After Zikun fixes his hair and puts, it on, puts on his Hayori, he sits down on the carpet with crossed arms facing away from me. I wonder if he's not forgiven me for disturbing his peace the previous time I met him. Um... Are you hungry? No. Are you cold? I can grab some blankets for you. No. Are you bored? I have some fun magazines. Leave me alone. Eh, you're no fun. I'm not here to have fun. I need to return to the forest as soon as possible. So you're saying that staying in the forest and hiding in a cave is better than having a roof above your head? Yeah, because there aren't annoying people like you around. Okay, boy. Listen here. My eyes twitches at his answer. Ugh, keep your cool, Majiko. We had to play along if you want to dig deeper into his background. You know, it's prohibited to live in the forest. If they catch you, you might get arrested. Zikun so shrugs off my warning and stays quiet. Since you are familiar with the forest, is there any chance you saw the tourists? They've been missing for a while. If you have any information that could help, their families would be grateful. Rumors say a demon took them, but that sounds silly to me. Why do you keep asking about those tourists? Stop digging into the matter. He brushes my questions off again. Talking with his guys like cracking nuts with bare hands. His suspicious attitude and vague answers make me certain he knows something, at the very least. The only thing I find odd is the fact that he saved me. Someone involved with disappearances would not do that. If a direct approach does not work, I should try something different. I take a seat on the couch and keep my eyes on Zikun. So? Stare all you want, you won't get any answers from me. I wasn't expecting to. You don't have to keep me company, you can go. I don't want to. 
So you can glance over his shoulder for a second. Just then, I think he was about to say something. He looks away again. I want to know more about him, but asking might make him upset. I stare at Zikun's clothes, hoping to find a clue about his identity. Perhaps he is one of the ritual practitioners to defend him by assuming he lives in the forest. Maybe I judged him too soon. Hey, I nearly jump when he starts speaking. Zikun turns to me and looks into my eyes. Why are you so bothered by the demon rumor? I don't believe the rumors, but I'm curious about what caused them. The real murderer might be using it as a cover. I want to do more research about the demon, in case they are. Perhaps I will understand their intentions as well. I have a bad feeling about these disappearances. If I don't do something, I might end up like them. I don't want to be a sitting duck. What if the rumors turn out to be true? Will you regret finding the truth? Even if there really is a demon and it turns out to be harmful, I will do my best to stop it. Stop it? What can someone like you do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you'll be surprised by, find, by anything you find. There are negative rumors about the demon for a reason. Save yourself the hassle. You won't get anything from knowing this. I'm going to discover the truth one way or another. Even if you know the truth, it, it won't change a thing. You'll just annoy the demon when you find it. I don't understand. The truth should give the investigators a better direction, shouldn't it? I'm not waiting until I'm next. I'll find out what's causing the disappearances and then find a way to stop them. Oh, and this is where I'll stop for today's episode because we're so far away. But anyway, we are now starting with Kirito's demo route. Not Kirito. What is your name? Zikun. Zikun's route. Sorry. Think about Kirito. Can't get him off my mind for some reason. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Oh,